welcome back to Ship of Fools, a nautical D&D actual play podcast. My name is Hannah McLean, and I am, as always, your dungeon master on this nautical adventure. Joining me here today, I have Andy Latai. Finn Fisher. No, Lonnie Stevenson. Reagan Stockwitha. And Taylor Wallace. Malachi Kassir. And we are back with our 50th episode, which is a crazy wow. number of Whoa. episodes to have done. Bad shit. Yeah. We're over the hill. I don't think I've ever done, I've never done 50 of anything. No. Wow. No. Mm. I just did 50 push-ups a minute ago before we started this. Mm. <laughs> Andy's super sweaty. Like it was nothing. <laughs> Andy had to get a quick pump on. Yeah. That's how he gets the brainless affectation of Finn. Sends all the blood rushing to the biceps. Which is ironic, because Finn has unimpressive biceps. <laughs> I've definitely done 50 squats. That was a mm. lie. Mm. So, yeah, let's do a quick recap, and then we will dive right in. Um, the party spent most of last session on uh, Angel Isle, kind of wrapping up some business there. Uh, you arrived to find that in your absence, as you were clearing out Solomon Cove, uh, Mira had departed, um, leaving behind the music box that Malachi had given back to her and going off with one of her pirate contacts to presumably keep being a pirate. Run away. Yeah, and that. Um, Hey, Hannah, you forgot about the part where we found a sick treasure. That's true. You did. That was also (laughs) the last episode. You found some sick treasure. Um, You found the uh, ghost zombie pirate that you were able to reunite with his sea witch lover um kind of pointed you to where he left his treasure um and so you got the pirate's treasure um sailed back to angel isle etc um also at angel isle you found that the rest of the lost crystal crew were back uh had returned to the pirate hub um Finn took this opportunity to settle some unfinished business um, (laughs) by giving Vance a band of loyalty disguised as a ring of warmth uh, and managed to convince Vance that this was a gift and he should put it on. Uh, And so Vance did so and is now wearing a ring that will kill him if he ever drops to zero hit points. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I love it when a plan comes together. Uh... Then, did anything else important happen? Uh, I saw that guy, and I had a backstory moment. Yeah, Reagan had a backstory moment. You got some sick tattoos. Got some sick tattoos. And then you gathered together your people um, and departed from the island to head to head back to Salaban Cove with kind of the plan to drop off your NPCs, make sure that they're settled and safe, um, and then from there, figure out exactly how the three of you are going to set about stopping the other powerful players in the Lunluma Ocean from making it to the sources of power before you do. So, uh, where we're kind of picking up, you have about a day, day and a night, basically, worth of sailing. Um, By this point, now that you've got five people who have gone back and forth from here twice now, um, I don't need a survival role. You're able to navigate your way through, especially with uh, the help that's provided by Reagan's new kind of navigator's tattoo helps you make sure that you're not, when the fog gets too thick, that you're not drifting off course. And you are uh, able to to stay the course pretty well. Um, Additionally, we discussed this on the mud bath, but I'll say it here too, the party has leveled up to level nine in between last episode and this episode. Um, So as you guys kind of rest, you, you know, feel stronger. Um, Actually, (laughs) remind me, did you um, take Matt Black with you and go on one of the other ships? Yeah, because we wanted to talk to assorted people. And that does also make it easier to make it through the Lightless Sea. You don't have to worry about getting split up um, if you've got fewer ships. So not on Matt Black, on one of the other ships. Um, But you feel yourselves growing stronger. Um, Pretty much as soon as you guys leave Angel Isle, Malachi uh, Shala pulls you aside and is like, Hey, can I... We've got like a day before we're getting to this spooky... X haunted cove, right? Uh, about that, yeah. Can I see your axe? I just want to make sure you probably haven't had anyone to like fix it up over the, the weeks or whatever that you years. I don't know when was the last time you got someone to look at your axe. 
Uh, usually I'm the only one looking at my ex. Although, I think Shiloh. Yeah, fine, that's fine. I guess. <laughs> Thanks. I give her my ex. I look at your ex all the time. That's true, Reagan. His eyes are up there, Reagan. <laughs> only sometimes have I given you permission. <laughs> She takes the axe and basically just spends like the next few hours just kind of like doing routine blacksmith maintenance on it. Um, when she gives it back to you a bit later, you see that she's put like a new, like more comfortable grip on the handle. For my big boy hands. Mm-hmm. And she hands it back to you and she's like, okay, I didn't want to think about you going off to do some sort of wild adventures without... Um, a, an axe that's going to work properly. So there you go. And she uh, gives it back to you and sort of like pats your shoulders. Thanks. Uh, does it look the same besides yeah. the new half? Yeah. It looks the same besides the new kind of like grip and the, it, you know, it looks a little bit shinier. Some of the dents have been smoothed out. Some of the, you you take pretty good care of your axe, but some of the like residual blood stains that were a little <laughs> in necrotic goop, especially from this last <laughs> set of combats, any trace of that's gone. And you kind of know that this is her way of making sure that you're taken care of. Thanks. Um, Shala, fuck, I don't know what I call you. <laughs> 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 um, speaking of Malachi's moms, um, you guys kind of observe that Mar is like, seems to have taken on a sort of like training role with the remnants of AAA. Um, yes. because a lot of them, like, again, you guys ended up with the tech guys. Yeah, we have all the nerds. You have all the nerds who weren't the combat ones. Um, but you can see that now... It seems like um, Mar has started basically offering to, like, give basic combat training to anybody who wants it. Um, and so she frequently is, like, over the course of this voyage, like, lining up groups of artificers and, you know, little wizards and other people uh, on the dock and kind of teaching them how to use a sword and how to protect yourself and how to wear armor and stuff like this. Um which she's quite good at. And you see she's settled into this role very naturally. And you also, I don't know how much this has been kind of said, but like a lot of the members of AAA, especially the ones that are still with you, are like younger. Like it's a lot of people who were kind of like in their sort of like prime adventuring age of like late teens and 20s. And Triple A tended to largely be made up of people who kind of had nowhere else to go and were like willing mm -hmm. to like risk it all for this cause. Um, either willing to risk it all for this cause or willing to risk it all for like the potential treasure and notoriety and whatever else they were searching right. for that could be gained by being part of this sort of organization. And you get the sense that a lot of them just really like Mar and are kind of like looking up to her. She has that effect. Yeah. Uh, speaking of sparring and training, um, Alden also has pretty much constantly, like, is, is pretty much constantly pacing the deck and, like, practicing with his sword. And you guys all sort of know him well enough and have been around him enough at this point, because he was doing this when you guys were going back and forth from Solomon Cove the first time, too, to sort of clue into the fact that this is clearly his, like coping mechanism that this is sort of how he's like processing what happened and sort of recovering from it is just doing these drills of like this is how this sword movement goes i'm moving my body i'm focusing on this clearly his way of recovering and then nell is spending most of their time writing in this book, which is something that you saw them doing before. Um, but they they've gotten this notebook from somewhere and are just like, writing and drawing diagrams and always seemingly always look like they're they're very deep in thought. Um, and also are usually either around wherever Alden is or around wherever Shiloh is. Um, Shiloh is mostly below decks and kind of has to be reminded to like come back above decks and see not the sun, but the fog and the sea air. <laughs> and will kind of pull the three of you pretty quickly after you guys leave Age Isle. We'll be like, okay, 
war council time um, and sort of like bring you into her little workshop that she's set up in one of the cabins below deck on the Ladyfinger. Nell and Alden are there too. And Shiloh sort of just kind of very bluntly like looks at the three of you and goes, okay, so where are you going next? East. East. Okay. I thought you said west. Uh, that's not a real direction. No one, nope. <laughs> okay. Maybe he knows about secret pirate directions. Um, so he's just kind of following the following the adventurer. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, hopefully not following exactly. Hopefully, maybe we'll get ahead of her somehow. Are you planning to cut like north and go through the Sea of Storms, or kind of take the southern route through more of the Lightless Sea? Uh, oh, this is further ahead than I've gotten. I'm yep. Reagan. <laughs> I'm, I'm a pirate who has relevant knowledge for this, and therefore I will provide an answer that is the correct one. <laughs> yeah, uh, make a... Reagan, you don't always have to preface your statements like that. It makes me feel better, like I'm less likely to be misconstrued if I, like, explain my reasoning. Uh-huh. Maybe we should get you a herald. Either survival <laughs> or nature. 17. Nice. Is that survival? Yes. Yeah, you think it through. Um, it's tricky because there isn't necessarily a just a straight up better option. It once again, like with most of the decisions I ask you guys to make, is one of those different dangers in different locations situations. Um, the Lightless Sea, uh, basically harder to navigate like once you're in the sea of storms you generally unless a storm like throws you way off course you generally know where you are um whereas the lightless sea it's just like kind of anything goes which makes it hard to travel however the sea of storms is way more likely to shipwreck you or have like a really bad monster kind of come for you um at least that's the the sort of reputation of it um so the direction that Nurgle saw the adventurer going, if she continues on that trajectory and doesn't turn or anything, she would end up in the Aberrant Sea northeast of the Emerald Eye. The choice that you guys are essentially faced with in order to get to that same spot is like, do you want to go north of the Emerald Eye or do you want to go south of the Emerald Eye? Um, going south means sailing through the Lightless Sea for probably like a week and then just cutting straight north into the Aberrant Sea. Going north of the Emerald Eye means going like um, probably like two days in the Lightless Sea and then five or six days in the Sea of Storms and then you get into the Aberrant Sea. Yeah, so it's kind of faster but riskier or slower and slightly safer yeah i'd personally prefer the lightless sea god i'd hate to miss out on seeing some cool sea monsters though i would personally prefer to go through the lightless sea simply because we haven't been in here much and also i know of at least one power source that's almost certainly in the lightless sea yeah that's the other thing that i was going to say is the additional factors that reagan would remember are there's low-key things you're looking for in the Lightless Sea, maybe. And also, you know that your magic, you felt the way your magic reacted to being in the Sea of Storms. It was cool. It was also definitely less controlled than it is here right now. Um, so that's kind of up to you in terms of what you're ready to tackle. And I've definitely been being called into the Lightless Sea, which might not end up being a good thing, but also, like, it seems pretty likely that she's out here somewhere. Which isn't to say we'll stumble across her on our way to the Abern Sea, but... But we might. But we might. And they certainly... Someone was looking for her, same as I have been, so... That reminds me, Hannah, given yes. that... I mean, I didn't know how that device worked, but I was holding on to it. I don't suppose I would have gotten anything from it when we were carrying it around, right? Just from, like, holding the device? I mean, from the brief time that we had to look at it. And seeing my rock in there and all that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, make a an arcana check, like a retroactive arcana check. Okay. That was an eleven. Okay. What an eleven gets you. It was a it was a hectic situation and it was not your first priority. However, you did hold on to that thing for a good couple minutes. Um, and definitely got a chance to see that like on top of it, like I said, there was a compass. There were a couple of other like little like circular that almost looked like compasses, um, but weren't 
as immediately recognizable as a compass, but were clearly also, like, taking measurements. Um, basically, like, one big central compass with the four cardinal directions, and then, like, a bunch of other little glass circles with needles in them that were pointing in various directions. And you couldn't really see it for long enough to be able to figure out what they did. But I will tell you that, so while your holy symbol was in it, the needle on the top compass, the like main compass, stayed pretty stationary and was mm. pointing in the same direction the whole time, uh, even right. as you were moving the box around. Some of the other little needles in the other parts of the device were moving around as if they were reacting to or reading some other sort of stimuli. Mm. Which direction was that? Was it just east? No, um, the needle was pointing kind of southeast. Sick. Weast. Lightless. And then when you took your holy symbol out, that needle went back to spinning kind of just like freely. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't think an 11 will allow you to either confirm or deny the kind of key question, which is, can the machine store data? I think as far as whether or not it could do that, you didn't really have enough time to inspect it in order to determine whether or not that's true. All right, well, I vote lightless C. <laughs> Yeah, I'm down for whatever. Shiloh sort of like nods and is like, okay, um, that sounds like a good idea. Especially since I feel like I might actually have, I don't know, I feel kind of cooler and stronger and like I could maybe make some light now. Oh, good for you. <laughs> I've heard that about you. She goes, she sort of like looks around at the supplies and like what looks to you guys mostly like junk, like scraps of metal and like various tools um, and some kind of like... Things that are clearly, like, glowing with arcane energy a little bit that are sort of spread out around her. And she's like, um, we were able to restock on the pirate island with some of the stuff that we need to be able to make better actual magic shit that's actually helpful. Um, the goal is to try and establish lines of communication with people we still know. The issue, of course, is that it's impossible to know who knew who's still in the adventurer's pocket versus who would be angry about what she did. I wish they were still in Finn's pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and who might sort of come down somewhere in the middle and be like, yeah, what the adventurer did working with Retval is fucked up, but also, oh boy, does she have the notoriety that she was looking for right now? I mean, from, from what we got from being on Angel Isle, the story's spreading. Um... So we're trying to we're trying to establish those lines of communication. Um, also, some of the people who are around, some of the the other artificers, the other members of AAA, um, we're going to see if any of them can safely get home because not everybody wants to. Some people just want to leave and go home. Yeah. So we're trying to determine who that's safe for. Of course. And if we can get them back to their families hmm. for right now everyone sort of understands that we need to at least wait and see if anyone's coming for us but that's part of the like ideally we have this ship we have amelia's ship Amel and amelia said that she's willing to stick with us so uh, if it turns out that we are able to get some of these people who don't necessarily want to be part of this anymore out of here that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. We should honestly get rid of as many people as we can. This is not going to be a battle won by numbers per se. Yeah. You feel. But the rest of us, those of us who do want to keep, basically keep helping you. Oh, shit. <laughs> and she just kind of looks at the three of you and is like, you are at this point the strongest ones like every. I don't know if you really realize that people are kind of. Oh, don't worry. I realize. <sighs> worrying. Um, <laughs> but I mean, she and she gestures over to Nell and Alden. She's like, they're looking to us as leaders for sure. They know us and we've been around. But the three of you uh, are 
clearly strong and impressive and kind of charismatic. So <laughs> uh, keep going. A lot of that, the people that who doesn't are, mean we know dick about shit in terms of what's like going on or like have any basis for making good decisions. I know this. Okay, you know this. I know this, and they know this. To be fair, we at this point we might know a lot more than some people. Yeah. And I think two out of the three of us have good decision-making skills. <laughs> say which two, Finn. <laughs> I won't tell you which ones. <laughs> Actually, I would say three out of the four. <laughs> ah! Nurgle's very sensible. Very is. Nurgle nods sagely. I'll never tell which. I think decision-making skills is a strong term there, Finn. Nell goes, the point, the point is that a lot of, most of the people who are still sticking around is because they want to help you guys and because they believe in your ability to <sighs> do something kind of good with the remnants of what we've got here. So, you know, take that in for a second. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. <laughs> I like it. Great, you be in charge. Malachi looks uncomfortable. <laughs> do you think I could get them to start worshipping the lurker? We're not impressing religions upon anyone right now, Finn. <laughs> I don't know if I'd call it a religion. I don't know if I'd call it impressing. More an acknowledgement of an inevitable truth. That sounds like a cult. <laughs> <laughs> Words can mean a lot of things. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ain't that just the way. But, yeah, certainly no one should be forced to fight or stay for anything. Yeah. That they aren't committed to. Alden nods and he's like, basically, what we'll do while... Once we, we get, we're going to get to this cove, we'll set up, make sure that we're safe there. And then we're going to work on getting people home who want to go home. But also those of us who are willing to stay and who are kind of in this with you are going to work on figuring out who we still have as allies around here and just sort of keep an eye on the status of things around this, around the Western Sea um, and Shiloh goes, communication is going to be an issue because the cloths certainly don't work that long distance as far as where you guys are going to go. Um, but I do have this. Um, and she pulls out a, like, pair of, uh, stones. They, they both, as you can see, as she holds them up, have the same, like, arcane rune carved onto them and she holds one of them out to whoever reaches out first to take it. Yoink. Okay. <laughs> Holds it out to Finn. Um, and she's like, these are just sending stones. All it does is it lets you cast sending once a day. So that's not especially conducive to conversations, but it'll at least let us let us alert you or let you alert us if something goes wrong um, or if you have like one question. Yeah, the they're better than nothing, at least until I can figure out something else. Yeah. Unless... I don't suppose any of you have any uh, no. ideas. No, most of my magic is pretty physical. Hmm. So we'll we'll make it work with this in the meantime. No, this is great. Thanks, Shiloh. I've been there's some stuff I've been sort of experimenting with. I don't. I'll I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> she she raises an eyebrow and she's like, okay, um, yeah. And then she she just sort of like brushes her hands together and she's like, okay, that was all that I had to say. Oh, did you guys, I forget, did we already talk to them about any, like, those three about any information that had been gathered on Angel Isle or not? Oh, yeah, didn't, didn't Nell say that Nira told you something to tell us? Um, they, Nira was just kind of looking around to see, basically, like, if anything else came in as far as information about, like, what people were saying. Um, let me, I, I will roll to see how well she did at that. Wow, pretty good. Um... So Shiloh nods and she's like, yeah, so before she, you know, skipped town, Nira said that, like, like I said, people are talking about the adventurer, the story's spreading, uh, she's become this, you know, revolutionary figure of standing against Lithios, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, all those things, you know, that we all thought she stood for too. So that's presumably making her stronger, if I understood her little speech right. Power of belief. So watch out for that. Yeah, exactly. Watch out for that when you run into her again. The Christmas spirit. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, there's still a bounty on all of us. Um, 
still no kind of further word on whether they have a better sense of your whole deals or appearances. We've all just sort of gotten lumped together as accomplices. No respect. <sighs> Always the bounty, never the bride. But frankly, you shouldn't have to, hopefully, by being down here in the Lightless Sea and by being out in the Aberrant Sea once you get there, you won't have to worry about it too much because there's not a lot of people around. Um... Shiloh goes, I did get a little bit of a chance. I still have more to do, partly because I can't fucking stand to look at it for more than, like, a, a half an hour at a time. Um, she points over to, like, the stack of Retfall's files mm -hmm. that uh, Reagan had started going through. And she's like, so most of it is just a lot of stuff that isn't um, a lot of talk about how power works and how magic like how raw magic interacts um how it can be used to create other things and stuff like that the the issue with trying to learn anything about retfall from his notes is that they're all so fucking dry and nell kind of nods and they're like yeah he you're not going to be able to tell anything about what he like wants or his motivations or anything like that from his notes because they're all just, you know, lab reports. So that doesn't surprise me. And Shiloh kind of nods and she's like, but I'm going to keep going through them. Um, if anything especially interesting jumps out at me, I'll let you guys know. Um, as far as where he is, I guess the one thing that, you might already know, but that is important to know if you don't, is that he definitely was tracing the Bright Sparks power mm. and lineage through a lot of the sorcerers he encountered, because a lot of them are, you know... Descendants in some form. Related to the Bright Spark, yeah, and related to the Dragon Isles and all of that. Wait a minute. So... I'm related to that. Yes. Huh. I whispered to Malachi, like I said, three out of four. <laughs> Don't look at me, I have a ten intelligence. <laughs> yeah, so if I had to guess where Dr. Retvol is, I would guess that he would go for the source of sorcery, if that makes sense. Well, that's certainly not my thing, so... Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, no, I mean, he had my holy symbol in there, so, I mean, he certainly hadn't... Either he'd already done it, or he hadn't gotten to that point yet. Yeah. But he wasn't actively doing it when we found the device. Huh. So, until then, that's kind of all I've gone. I wish... I feel like there must be something more helpful, but... Yeah, I feel like we're going in fucking circles and everybody's like 17 steps ahead of us and I'm really getting sick and tired of being like expected to understand how to handle things. So I'm just, I'm going to go. And yeah, I storm off Where? to the deck. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to think that maybe it would have been better if more of us put our stock into int and wisdom. <laughs> um, Reagan storms off. Well, as the brainy one of the group. <laughs> <laughs> Noted brainiac, Finn Fisher. I think we have, we don't have much of a plan, but we what we have is good. Like, we gotta go east, we gotta find something and do something about it. <laughs> um, Alden, like, <laughs> makes eye contact with Shiloh and then, like, follows Reagan. Is the ward council adjourned? Good talk. <laughs> Shiloh's like, yeah, that was all. I just wanted, I mostly just wanted to know where you guys were going and to tell you what we were doing. Yeah. I don't know, I'm kind of used to being told what to do as well, and this is the first time that I've been sort of put into a position where people are looking to me for, well, people besides traveling companions are looking to me for my input on something. So, yeah, I feel like chasing this down the same things that they are is sort of our only option right now if we want to prevent that from being collected by someone with dubious intentions. Yeah. Yeah. Get to them first. And we all know that we're good at races. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've already beaten Ben's time once. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So you guys... Adventurer's name wasn't even on that board. She's probably not even dexterous at all. <laughs> <laughs> you sort of split up. Um, Alden catches up with you, Reagan, and sort of like 
there's not many places to kind of go on the ship, so you didn't really get far. You just got kind of upstairs. <laughs> I just got upstairs. Yeah, but he sort of, like, falls into step next to you, um, hands in his pockets, and he's like, you want to spar? Fuck yeah. <laughs> no thanks, I just ate. <laughs> I was going to ask you. <laughs> he grins and he's like, yeah, uh, I think we were kind of feeling the same thing. And, yeah, you guys clear a space on the deck, sort of, sort of like, shoo people out of the way. Which, there has been, you know, part of the deck that's sort of designated to people practicing sword fighting at this point. Um, Move, tech nerds! And go ahead, and I, we're just going to, because you guys Ah, are, my jacks! <laughs> because you guys aren't really fighting, um, we'll just do, like, athletics checks to sort of represent... Um, because I believe your athletics modifier is the same as your, like, hit with my hammer modifier. Yes. You guys kind of, you know, square up. Um, Alden has his sword. You have your... Do you use your hammer or do you go for something else? I'm gonna bare hand. I'm gonna go brass knuckles. Okay. Because the sword? Yeah. It's more interesting. <laughs> okay. Alden shrugs and he's like, okay. You can block with them. Yeah, well, I'm not trying to hurt you, so... We're just playing. We're just guys being dudes. So go ahead and give me an athletics check. Uh, it's a nat one that comes to an eight. <laughs> <laughs> Should have used a sword, Regan. <laughs> so you kind of like square up and get ready to fight. And Alden sort of just like sidesteps you pretty easily. And basically like runs the edge of his sword like along your brass knuckles and it makes this kind of like chiming noise almost oh <laughs> he's a lot quicker on his feet than you are um it is much more just has more experience so he's kind of darting around you god i love him um but go ahead and make a second roll if i can simply pin him i'll win uh, dirty 20. Wow. Um, nat 20 for him. Epic highs and lows <laughs> of high school sparring. Maybe he really just wants to pin you. <laughs> yeah. This time, you come in, like, much, much stronger. You sort of start to figure out his fighting style a little bit. Um, so you basically manage to, once you guys have kind of gotten close, you manage to, like, grab him and have him in a much more advantageous position to you, but then he manages to just sort of, like... Judo flip me. <laughs> essentially, yeah. Um, just kind of flip you off of him and points his sword at you. You can see that he has this a more relaxed grin than you've seen from him as he's kind of concentrating on this. Um, give me one more roll. Remember the first time we sparred? I do. <laughs> uh, 13. Only a 10 for him. So at this point, as he is sort of relaxing into the fight. It's been a while. We're both getting sloppy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's gone on at this point a little bit longer. At this point, like a few people are kind of like watching. Nobody's getting too close. Um, but a few people are, are watching from various points around the deck. Um, you manage to basically from the ground where he judo flipped you, you just trip him um and he was not expecting that and ends up uh sprawled out and he drops his sword and it stabs yeah. <laughs> reagan through the throat <laughs> no um ends up falling prone um and then pretty quickly like springs back to his feet and kind of flicks his hair out of his eyes and is like that was good you got me for a second there <laughs> Everybody always forgets about their legs. Yeah, sure, yeah. Um, I don't know, I just said that. <laughs> on the other side of the ship, Finn is lying down, and he suddenly looks down at his legs, and is like, ah! <laughs> See? <laughs> um, he, like, extends out a hand to help you up. I, I take it. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, I pull him down. <laughs> and I pin him. Yeah, um, you're stronger, and he, again, was not expecting it. Um, so you kind of managed to, like, pull him down and pin him, and he's like, fucking, see, no one was, expects being pinned at the end of a fight, either. Nobody expects legs! Mm -hmm. This is what you get from- <laughs> That was his hand! What is the hand but the leg of the arm? Mm. <laughs> Close. I was with you for the first half of that. <laughs> <laughs> what is the hand? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's so true. <laughs> Um, he kind of, like, taps the deck. I don't know how wrestling works. Yes, you tap out. Does whatever the sort of let-me-up motion is. 
Wow, it's too bad they're chest to chest and cheek to cheek. <laughs> and toe to toe. I move his I, I flick his hair out of his face and let him up. He sits up and sort of like rolls his shoulders um and kind of like looks over at where his sword is just laying on the deck next to him. Um and doesn't immediately move to stand up. He just kind of like breathes and like looks over at you. And then he lowers his voice and you see his expression get a little more serious. And he's like, Reagan, when you eventually run into Retvol out there, fucking kill him, all right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's the plan. Good. I figured it was, but I wanted to make sure. Now that you said it, it feels like, I feel like I have more reasoning behind it, you know? Like, I feel like other people mm. may have been like... You should demonstrate mercy or something. Fuck no. Or like, <laughs> maybe it's a worse torment to like hold him in an anti-magic sphere forever. Yeah. I just... No. No, no. Yeah. Smash his head with his hammer, you know, fry him with lightning, lots of options. I'm not really picky. Yeah, yeah, no, really, we, uh, yeah. You want a drink? Sure. Word. <laughs> <laughs> you guys get a drink. The ships continue to sail quietly through the lightless sea. Um, eventually, the sun goes down, um, which you know because it gets a lot darker. You can't exactly see the sun. <laughs> um, but uh, everyone kind of spreads out amongst the ships to, you know, go to bed. And I am going to stay up a little bit later than everyone else than I usually okay. do. And I'm just, I assume it's another hammock situation. Yeah. Uh, and I've been thinking about dreams a lot because longtime listeners will know that we have dreams sometimes. <laughs> uh, and I think I might have finally cracked it. And I sit down in my bed and I close my eyes and I begin to concentrate. And then I, and then I sort of cock my head and open my eyes and I'm like, no, no, this would be better. And I leave, and I go, where's Baleen sleeping? Um, probably, like, she's she's made friends with, like, some of the other um, AAA people. Um, so she's got kind of, like, a bestie at this point um, that she's been hanging out with. Um, and they're kind of, like, over, not too far away from you. Um, just kind of, like, a few hammocks over. Hey, Baleen. Baleen, wake up. What? Oh, I... Just fell asleep. Is everything okay? Yeah, no, everything's good. I have a I have a surprise for you, hopefully. <laughs> oh, is this is this another prank? Cause I know it's been a while, but No, it's not. It's not. We're not doing a prank, and this is not a prank on you. Okay. Well, I guess that's what I would say if it was a prank on you, so <laughs> you can't be sure, can you? <laughs> Never am. Always keep my guard up. <laughs> uh listen, I think I can I can put you into Min's head. Uh, elaborate on that? <laughs> Not surgically. I mean, with magic. <laughs> I didn't think surgically. I assumed it would be magic. But again, elab what do you mean? I mean, I think I can cast the fifth level spell Dream and allow you to <laughs> enter his mind while he sleeps. Oh. And like it would, like it would really be me and it would be him? Yeah, like you could hang out for roughly eight hours. <laughs> I could just be in his dream and he would like... He would know it was real? Yeah, I mean, not unless you said it. I mean, you well, could pretend yeah. it was a just a dream, but you could no, also I... say, hey, it's really me because of magic. <laughs> uh, that would be, that would be great. Yeah, I suspected it might be. Uh, she just, like, gives you a hug. Aww. I hug her back, <sighs> and I now feel secure that I'm still her better friend than this other bestie <laughs> that she's recently <laughs> made. <laughs> She sits back and she's like, yeah, what do I do? What do I, is that, how do I, how does it work? Uh, you don't really have to do anything. Just um, oh, okay. give me a second to concentrate here and then it should just happen. Okay, I'm ready. She just, she's, do I, should I sleep? Do I lay down? Should I sit up? You can sleep. I think the spell doesn't really describe like if you're sleeping or not during it or what, but huh. if I'm the one okay. casting it, I assume she can be sleeping. Yeah, okay. I'll just lay down. She lays back down in her hammock and doesn't close her eyes. <laughs> and I put my hand on her forehead and I cast Dream while concentrating on our friend Min. 
Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, you see her eyes are open initially, um, but then as you cast the spell, they sort of shut, and you see her get this, like, little smile on her face um, as she dreams. Wow. Ooh, getting, getting a little bit choked up about this. <laughs> um, <laughs> so cute. Um, speaking of dreams, um, Reagan and Finn, you guys, Finn, when you eventually, do you need to, how does dream work? Do you need to, like, concentrate on it? No, it's not concentration. So I, so I guess, yeah, I do this, watch her for a few minutes, and then go to bed myself. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so Finn and Reagan, um, your nights pass uneventfully, um, up to you, your own prerogative, whether or not you dream. Um, Malachi, you just have a dream that is beat for beat identical to the one that you had last time. There's nothing different about it. It's the same fog, the same rowboat, the same uh, kind of movement through the water until you reach this flame hovering over the, the surface of the water. The same sense of foreboding, like something bad is going on or something bad is coming. But you don't feel any actual effects from it. It's mm. it's not like making you unable to rest or anything, but it certainly is uh, unsettling and present as you complete your long rest and wake up. Can I detect magic in my dream? Yeah, sure. You cast detect magic within your dream. Um, at what point do you do this? Do I hear the help me again? Um, no, actually. I think mm. this time you it's silent. You don't hear anything. That's the one difference from the previous time this happened. I would like to cast detect magic as soon as I feel the danger. Okay. Or the foreboding. Yeah. You sense that the, like, star thing itself, it is, it's already, you know, extremely bright and glowing, um, but Detect Magic makes it seem like it's even glowing brighter. Like, this is clearly just pure magic. Um, doesn't ping as any particular school. Mm. Um, you do feel a ring of abjuration just kind of like around like mostly around the light um but it, it seems like it's sort of like spreading out and like it's in the water almost mm. um like the water itself is somehow obdurative um i don't think that sense of foreboding the trouble with it is that you you can't see anything it's just mm. something you're feeling and so that makes it very hard to tell right whether it's magic or not I will allow an Arcana check to see if you can glean anything more from this. Eleven again. Yeah, I think you you can't tell, but but you can feel that like all of this. I think that detect magic confirms for you that there is something magical going on about the fact that you're having these dreams. Like this isn't just a natural manifestation of your subconscious. It mm. feels external but you can't get any more information than that all right and i don't do anything differently within the dream i just am drifting yeah no okay this sucks <laughs> <laughs> you wake up um finn you actually baleen wakes you up she like shakes your shoulder and wakes you up oh no no the fish hook is too big oh what oh <laughs> hey baleen D hey baleen that Did it was work? great. Oh, it worked. It worked so well. I was I was in his dream and I could like it turned out that I could like make everything look like whatever I wanted it to look like. Ooh. And so it was like we were on the beach and then we like flew around for a while because we could just do that Whoa. in dreams. Um and he told me about what's happening in Gillsbury. Um everybody misses you and is very worried about us. Um but they're all okay. Mm. Um your dad is hurt but he's recovering. Father Ceviche is taking care of him and thinks that he'll I'm be fine. fine. Um the boats are all fucked, um, and everyone's still kind of trying to figure out what to do about that. Um, but there's, like, people from the other villages and stuff like that around. Like, um, More, um went over to his aunt's family in the next <laughs> town over and got, like, a whole bunch of... They're sending, like, a bunch of supplies and stuff. So, like, nobody's going to starve or anything. Um, all right. They're making sure that all of that's taken care of. Um, apparently, some people are being really shitty about um, you. Uh, like, what? you know, the O'Connors are saying that this is all your fault, <laughs> um, and it's because oh of your, God. you know, 
worshipping the monster of the deep and that that's making bringing trouble on Gillsbury and uh, the only monster in Gillsbury is Guppy <laughs> that's what I said um and Min agrees but it's things are kind of tense there um and everyone's very stressed out but other than that people are okay and they're glad that the ships are gone um has Father Ceviche considered leveling up to learn create food and water <laughs> He, he probably has create food and water, but it only feeds like 20 people. <laughs> Man, that guy's so old. How is he not level 20 by now? <laughs> <laughs> create loaves and fishes. Yeah, exactly. Um, and Min says that he misses you and he wanted me to tell you that he's worried about you, um, but that he trusts you um, and that he's uh, excited to hear about all of your adventures Okay, that's that's good to hear. Well, some of that is good to hear. Thank you. That was really Oh, you're welcome. I was I've been really worried and I missed him. My pleasure. Yeah, I figured that Yeah. That's got to be just got to be really hard. Yeah. I mean, I miss him a lot too and we don't even kiss. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So Yeah, thanks, Finn. She gives you another hug. Anything for you. Hmm. Um, when we're, you, you and Malachi and Reagan are leaving to go do adventures more, right? Right. Okay. Be careful, you know. I know I always uh-huh. say that, but. Um, yeah. Hey, it's worth saying. You, that spell, your dad let you do that? Like, you, the lurker, your dad? Yes. I mean, you know, I don't really have a super deep understanding of how magic worked, but it was just something that I thought about doing, and I just sort of concentrated on it for a while, and then it worked. And I mean, the fact that I can do magic comes from my dad, so I guess, yes. Yeah. And you, like, you you trust him? (laughs) Oh, my dad? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I, th- I think there's something bad going on, but I trust him, of course. I just There's just something blocking our connection. I went to a fortune teller. She told me all about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, not all about it. She told me what I just said. That was sort of the extent of the useful information. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Because it is kind of, you know, when your dad's like a terrifying sea monster with the reputation for destroying things it's a little bit hard to know kind of where to fall on that but yeah families come in all shapes and sizes you know yeah as long as you trust him and as long as he will you know protect you and make sure that you have the magic oh i'm sure he will yeah okay that's good the alternative has never even occurred to me in fact (laughs) it still hasn't (laughs) Let's, yeah, let's keep it that way. Everything's fine. Right. <laughs> she, she, she grins um, and is like, okay, I'm going to go get breakfast. Let's go get breakfast. Ooh, yeah. Love <laughs> breakfast. One of the top three meals. <laughs> That's what I've always said. So uh, you guys all gather on the deck, have breakfast, etc. Solomon Cove is only a few hours out. Um, and so after sailing for a little bit more that morning, the ships kind of pull in. Um, it looks as you left it. Um, the shipwreck that had been there when you arrived has mostly sunk beneath the waves at this point. Um, you do not see a ghost ship this time. You're sort of on the lookout for it <laughs> as you pull around into the cove. Um, but there is no ghost ship. No zombies lunge out of the water to attack you. If you sort of like, you know, Finn, if you stick your head down into the water, or as you look down from the shore, you see that the zombies that filled the bay have decomposed even more. And so now there's sort of... I mean, the floor of the bay is still littered with human bones, but Badass. that could be part of the aesthetic. Yeah. Um, is the one fish still there? Yeah. Uh, you send out your telepathy. The one fish um, is like, oh, you're back. Yeah, what's up? Brought some friends. They're going to be staying here for a bit. Nice. I've been eating the flesh down here. <laughs> Hell yeah, bud. <laughs> my man. <laughs> There's a bunch more of my friends are here now, too. Oh, wow. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, hi. We're also here. <laughs> Eating flesh. 
Woo, flesh. Hey, 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 listen. Just uh, don't eat these people's flesh, okay? Oh, okay. Are they going to eat our flesh? Oh, no, don't worry. I'll make sure they don't. Oh, great. <laughs> Good to know. Um, you guys... Pull into the cove. The ships are kind of moored. You find good good spots to moor them. You you guys kind of sh- show the uh, people steering the ships where to go so that they don't crash into the rocks that kind of fill part of this cove. Um, the spot where you dug up the treasure chest is still a hole. Oh, there was nothing in that hole. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a hole we found. And the, the grave that the captain crawled out of is also a hole. That was just another hole we found. <laughs> A lot of holes around here. Uh huh. Sure. Quicksand and all. And everyone, everyone sort of sets about disembarking the ships and, you know, exploring and settling in and figuring out where to set up. Um, how long do you guys want to stick around? What time is it? You get to Solomon Cove at like around noon. So you could kind of, if you like, take the afternoon and then stay the night and then leave in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. So, over the course of the next few hours, you kind of help, like, unload the ships. Um, There are some, like, tents and stuff that get set up on shore. Basically, sort of settling into just sort of living in a combination between on the beach and on the ships. Um, There's sort of a, like, rope that gets set up from, like, the top of the cliffs down to the beach, just so people can get up there easier uh, if the need arises to do so. Um general like exploration and stuff like that um toward the like night time as everything gets quieter there's like a bonfire that gets made um mm-hmm. and people like bring out the supplies from the ships and there's like clearly someone uh probably not amelia who thought of this um but someone thought to restock alcohol as well so true <laughs> from angel isle and so there's drinks that are getting passed around as people are sort of celebrating being in a relatively safe spot um you guys kind of sit down with everyone else um at some point during this hanging out at the bonfire, I track down Shiloh mm-hmm. and I say, hey, so remember that thing I said I was experimenting with? Yes. Uh, it works. I can appear in your dreams. Oh, Or anyone's whoa. dreams. Whoa. Great. <laughs> uh, I better not see anything anything too funny business going on in there, you know? In my dreams? What are you, the dream police? <laughs> oh, sick cheap trick reference. I'm just saying. Okay. No, but this is good because then you could tell us what's going on with you and we could tell you what's going on with us exactly oh my goodness that's great okay still not you know we could like hang out and play games and stuff too (laughs) yeah for sure (laughs) yeah like that's great sure (laughs) (laughs) yeah i could conjure any board game you can name (laughs) wow that's great because board games were not really something that people grabbed from HQ, <laughs> and we definitely used to have some really good ones. So there's a whole closet there that's still got a lock on it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we got Canasta, we got Pachinko, we got Twister, <laughs> Settlers of Catan. Yeah, they were all over the place. Um, cool. You tell Shiloh about that. Um, Finn, do you tell anyone to not eat the fish? Because you definitely see that people are like. The assumption is, of course, we're going to catch some of the fish that are here, and that'll be part of the whole deal. Oh, yes. I I have... I get up <laughs> at some point during all of this. I get to a slightly elevated area. I shout, hey, everyone, everyone listen. It's me, Finn, <laughs> Finn Fisher. You're all vegetarian now. <laughs> and everyone's listening. <laughs> uh, so, general note, Welcome to this cove that we cleared out of horrible zombies for you. Yay! Everybody claps. Uh, don't eat the fish. <laughs> the, the applause sort of like dies down as you say, don't eat the fish. And people are sort of like looking between them. Important note, do not eat the fish. Any fish that live in this bay are friends and not to be eaten. Uh, the important note there is that they are flesh eaters. So That's true. They won't eat any of your flesh either, as long as you don't eat any of theirs. It's a peaceful coexistence. Marco raises his hand. Yes, Marco. <laughs> yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Marco. You, we're, we've met. <laughs> hi, yeah. Marco. What's what's the stance in this cove on, like, taking a rowboat out a little bit further and catching the fish out there? Well, me personally, negative, but that's not as bad as catching a fish right from the bay. It's okay. It is the lightless sea, so I guess if you find yourself familiar enough with the area, but that's... 
you're gonna have to take precautions. Yeah. A long rope or something like that. And there's supply runs to Angel Isle, too. Mm-hmm. There are certain compacts that I have made and am making on our behalf that will, you know, go some ways to ensuring everyone's safety. But, but, you gotta not eat the fish, all right? That's the one thing. That's the one thing I'm asking here. Um, Andy, make either a persuasion or an intimidation check. <laughs> Probably persuasion, but if you'd like to be intimidating, that's fine, too. 28 persuasion. Okay, cool. Jeez. Yeah. Come on, guys. Pretty please for me. <laughs> You're just so charming. Finn's and- eyes suddenly turn enormous and cartoonishly sparkly with big fluttery eyelashes that he bat. <laughs> you see everyone kind of like looks between each other at this sort of odd request and then just sort of shrugs. And you, Finn, you had... Shiloh had said, like, everyone's kind of looking to you guys to be in charge. Um, But this is where you sort of are, like, feeling it. Like, people generally are willing to just kind of take your request and be like, okay. um, And just sort of go back to what they were eating, which didn't include fish. Good. All right. Fantastic. Did they bring any livestock? I hope they did. And if you see any, like, I don't know. I don't think there's much animal life on this island, but any land animals? Go wild. Do whatever you want with them. No, well, not whatever you want. You can eat them. What about birds? Um, I point to Nurgle. Do not eat this bird. Ah! Other birds are fine. <laughs> cool. Thank you for your time. <laughs> so a couple people, like, kind of awkwardly clap <laughs> as if they thought maybe they were supposed to. That actually does remind me. Hannah, when we landed in the afternoon, uh, uh-huh. is there any part of this island that isn't sand? Or just pure rock? Um, there's not, like, grass or anything. But there are, like, a couple of, like, scraggly trees that kind of, like, grow out of the top of the rock. Um, somewhat oddly, but plants can survive in a lot of circumstances. Um, so there's, like, some, like, dirt up there. Sick. Uh, I would like to spend the afternoon casting plant growth. Oh, cool. If I spend eight hours doing it, all of those plants become enriched for a year, and they yield twice the normal amount of food when harvested. Yeah, cool. You can do that. Malachi, you are the first one to use this kind of, like, rope that gets set up to, like, climb up to the top of these craggy rocks, where there are, like, three just, like, straggly, like, struggling-to-survive trees and a few, like, weeds that have somehow managed to, like, eke the nutrients out of this patch of soil at the top of the cliffs and you focus on your holy symbol and just yeah i focus on my holy symbol and i sort of kneel down and i sort of start with the tree and then go around through the edges of the dirt sort of like carefully like making little rows and stuff and leaving the weeds because they deserve to live (laughs) yeah and just going around to each patch of dirt and enriching the soil yeah despite the total lack of sunlight and despite the like <laughs> barely enriched soil here um you manage to over the course of the afternoon um bring life to the top of this rock uh the trees start growing leaves and you see the kind of like beginnings of flowers that look like they're going to be fruit um you see like little the grasses like you actually get some grass kind of growing out of the dirt the weeds uh like become much healthier and start growing their own little flowers um yeah and you you sort of craft this area of real foliage in the middle of the lightless sea wow i love this this is my new favorite spell (laughs) um that takes you long enough that like the bonfire is kind of like well and truly started by the time you like come back down um you catch like the tail end of finn's speech um (laughs) as you sort of come climb back down and go to rejoin the group um as you're sort of walking over you see that uh, Nell, like, stands up from around the group that's by the bonfire and comes over to basically, like, intercept you before you get over there. Um, You see that they're holding uh, this book that they've been writing in in their hands. Um, And as they approach and stand in front of you, they just sort of hold it out. And they're like, this is for you. Me specifically? You and Reagan and Finn, but I figured you were the one who'd be most interested in having it. 
I take it from them. I, I've seen you writing in it, but I open it like, what is this? Yeah, I tried to write down everything useful that I could think of and a lot of things that didn't seem useful at the time, but that I think now might mean something. Everything that I remember from the time when I was working with my father, everything that I remember that the adventurer told me, the little pieces that didn't quite fit together and the information that might come in handy for you as you're trying to stop them. I, I'm i sure there's things I forgot and I'm sure there's things in there that don't matter, but I wanted to make sure that you had it. You know, no more secrets. Yeah. Wow. Um, I mean, you probably know more than anyone, anybody else here and certainly every, everything helps. Yeah. And this way you won't have to try and get it from us over 25 words sendings. <laughs> Or in Finn's dreams, apparently. Yeah, uh, hopefully he'll, he'll be judicious with that, but... <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Nell. I know that this probably isn't the happiest stuff to write about, um, but... <sighs> you know, I... I... trusted my father. I thought... That what he was doing, as insane as it sounds to say now, I, I thought that he was going to make the world a better place, that he was going to make Lithio stronger, and that that was what was going to make the world a better place, and that he was working for everyone. And then once I learned I was wrong about that, once I realized how wrong I was, then I thought the adventurer was the one, that we needed someone like her to stand up to someone like my father or like the king of Lithios or like all these other people and then I was wrong there too. Yeah, I know. I know the feeling. Um, sort of starting to realize that there's not... It's not going to be someone we can turn to who's just going to know the right thing. Well... Certainly not do the right thing, but... Well, now I'm trusting you. And I wish... I wish I would like to be able to stand here and say that this time that I know that I'm right. I wouldn't... I I don't know what the right thing is, but... I won't lie to you. If that helps. It's a lot more than I've gotten. So it does help. Yeah, and it's nice to... be trusted with information like this, too. This is the first time that anyone's really given us that, so... Maybe it's... Maybe it's just got a... It's not a one-person job. Hopefully. I really hope. I don't know... I don't know if what we're doing is the right way to do this, or if it's going to be anything, or if there's anything we can do, but... <sighs> I really hope. We have to try something. Yeah. Yeah. They, like, release the book and <laughs> sort of step back a bit and put their hands in their pockets. Um... Do you want to... Um, sit by the fire? They nod and, like, grin a little. And you see a sort of, like, a little bit of a sense of a weight lifted as they're passing the book over to you. That, yeah. like, as they sort of, like, shake out their arms, it's it's like they've put something very heavy down. Um, and they kind of nod and they're like, yeah, let's... Finn was making a speech about fish. Um, uh, yeah. That's... Which he seems to be done with by now, but... That tends to happen. <laughs> I, maybe we could get him to make another one. I was kind of having a good time. Um, <laughs> you see Finn's head swivels over. You want me to make another speech? <laughs> Honestly, yeah, Finn. Go ahead. Uh, Tell us more about fish. Hello, everyone. It's me, Finn, again. <laughs> How many people are here? <laughs> There's like, you've ended up with probably like um, 30 to 40-ish people total. Hmm. Uh, let me see. What's uh, what's in the news lately? Uh, adventurer. Ooh, you heard about this thing? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, uh, let me see. I feel like I should talk to Malachi's moms. Nell, I didn't have anything else prepared. Yeah, I, I've been wanting to talk to my moms. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fish sure are great. I just have nothing to say to them. I just feel like I should acknowledge that they're here <laughs> on account of being moms. Mm-hmm. 
they're here. Um, they're sitting kind of like next to a couple of Amelia's crew. Um, and if Reagan wanted to be hanging out with them, you certainly can. They're just sort of talking about I, I, like. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've got um, complicated feelings about moms as a species. So true. Um, I'm just going shot for shot with Alden. <laughs> the distance between, like, the AAA people and Amelia's crew and Malachi's moms um, and Baleen um, that, like, existed at the beginning of this, all of those, like, the longer all these people hang out together, the more those divisions sort of relax and the more it's just a group of people hanging out. Um, Amelia is, has, like, sat down kind of, like, with everyone else, very kind of, like, rigid and straight-backed and is, like, uh, doing the sort of, you know, robot imitation of a human kind of relaxing um (laughs) good for her (laughs) and yeah everyone is just sort of if there's anyone in particular you want to talk to feel free otherwise everyone's just hanging out i mean you got your jawless fish armored fish cartilaginous (laughs) fish am i right am i right (laughs) tetrapods cephalopods oh baby one person is like really enthusiastically following this (laughs) yeah this guy knows what i'm talking about Woo! big fish fan over here uh i was thinking about creating food and water for their first day just to preserve an extra day's worth of rations i guess and do Mm -hmm. that before we go to sleep so i don't have both of my third levels gone tomorrow yeah you can totally do that it'll just be enough for them for tomorrow not even the whole day maybe because it's only for 15 humanoids but hey, it's still something yeah everybody's appreciative um it makes up for the fact that they need to go out further in order to fish yeah. now and malachi <laughs> is enjoying the feeling of providing <laughs> yeah and here's the thing, inside the gills, each one has filaments which contain capillary networks. <laughs> <laughs> now you've got a few more people interested. Um, they're sort of like, almost like taking notes as if this is like a lecture of some sort. But I mean, obviously, you know, if we're talking about bony fish, that's a whole nother uh, kettle of fish, if you will. They've just got a single gill opening on each side. Wow. God, and they're all tech nerds, so they're probably actually, like, interested. We got the fucking STEM majors, and he's giving a guest lecture. <laughs> I don't know. I want to talk to my mom, but I don't think I would go over to them. I think I'm going to sit with Finn and Reagan. Yeah. I'm going to keep fighting with Alden. Okay. You can sit next to Finn, but he is going. That's fine. I'm just sitting in your presence. He is just monologuing about fun fish facts all night. <laughs> Malachi already had his one social interaction for the night, and it was with Nell, who's <laughs> equally as uh, weird <laughs> in those situations. And this is the best part. They release their nitrogenous wastes as ammonia. Whoa. That sounded like I was the fish responding. <laughs> the fish are also listening. Oh, yeah. That I'm was. also, yeah. I'm simulcasting this via telepathy to the fish in the water. <laughs> They've gathered and they're like, this is crazy. We didn't even know this about ourselves. (laughs) How does he know so much stuff about the interior of our bodies? (laughs) Wow, I make ammonia. When you talk about bony fish, a bunch of them go, whoa, that's me. (laughs) It's like it's like Bilbo's birthday speech. He's calling out all the different <laughs> Hobbit families: the bony yeah. fish, the cartilaginous <laughs> fish, the octopodes. Oh, we got some lobe fin fish that are from out of town over here. Yeah, they had to travel. Ooh. The fish all kind of like nudge each other and are pointing at the, the lobe fish or whatever you just said. <laughs> um, <laughs> eventually, everyone makes their way to sleep. Um, Malachi, you dream of being on a rowboat in a sea of mist. Hmm. This time the light stays far away. And you just sort I of I guess drift I gotta do something about this one, huh? Aimlessly. <laughs> um, Have we considered putting you in a rowboat? Just set him out to drift. <laughs> I, I did consider going in a rowboat, but we were in the middle of the lightless sea. So I decided not to do it by myself <laughs> at the time. I can be underneath the rowboat. I'm hanging on to the bottom like Cape Fear. No. <laughs> also, once again, before we go to bed, I stay up a little later and just stand on the beach and spend a while just beaming out the telepathic message that all of the people on this island are friends of the deep and they should be protected and that anyone wow. hearing this message should pass it along to their friends. 
Okay. Make a persuasion check for speaking to the fish. 21. Okay. Um, yeah, you, once again, the kind of, like, fish network is those within 120 feet, then, like, swim back out of 120 feet and continue to distribute your message to the denizens of this general patch of the ocean. And also, when everyone gets up in the morning, they see there's now, like, a bunch of weird sigils that I've drawn in squid ink on the rocks. <laughs> What do those mean or do? Or are they just they're, there? They're protective symbols. Okay. They, in, they invoke the, the power and protection of the lurker. Okay, cool. They came to me in a dream when I was seven. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would like to either, I guess, after most people leave the fires or perhaps just waking up earlier in the morning, but I'd like to find a quiet moment to myself, at which point I can open the music box. Yes. In the morning, kind of after waking up from yet another sort of troubled dream, most people are still asleep. A few have sort of started waking up, but you're able to pretty easily find a quiet spot. Can I go up to my little garden? Yeah, you go up to your little garden. Um, It looks just, again, still this, this patch Careful, of don't smudge my sigils! Yeah. <laughs> you, you climb past Finn's sigils. Oh, morning, Finn! <laughs> morning! And you sit down against the tree and open the music box. Um, there is a very small note. It's not very long, just a few lines. Other than that, everything looks the same as it was. The music box faintly plays a song that feels familiar. Um, the little note just says, Sorry, Malachi. Baba always said I should be a sister you could look up to. I know I don't need to tell you to not do anything the way I did it. Stay safe. See you around. Nira. <laughs> Woof. I just sit there looking at it for a while. Um, and I think I would like to put the note in my pocket and dig my own little treasure hole for the box. <sighs> cool. Yeah. Up here by the trees or down at the beach? Up in the little garden. Okay. Put it in the dude's grave. <laughs> no! <laughs> Yuck! <laughs> you dig a little hole, you put the music box in it, you cover it back up. The magical enhanced growth of this area, you see the weeds sort of like start to grow over the spot. And I, I will remember where this is. Yeah. It's right next to the tree. And I just sit there until, like, the sun's fully up and I notice more people moving around down below and, like, when we should get going. Yeah. You climb down. Everyone kind of comes to see you off. Um, Baleen gives each of you a hug and gives Finn a really big hug. Oh. Be safe. Um, dream to me, I guess, sometimes. <laughs> I don't, don't I will. like, I know it's magic and I, I don't, I know you don't have that many spells all the time, but you know, when you can, just to check in, we can hang out. Of course. You be safe too, all right? Yeah, I will. And we'll let you know if anything happens. Um, everybody kind of is giving you guys hugs and handshakes as appropriate. Um, Shiloh sort of like instructs you on how the sending stones work again and is also kind of like, and you have like enough potions, you have enough of all that stuff and okay, good. I do, I go for the hug with that one guy who was into my fish speech. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you go for the hug. He's like, I learned so much about fish. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime, brother. <laughs> so... Sorry, this this may be me just being an idiot. Um, Shiloh's not coming with us. Mm -mm. No one is coming with you. None of the three of them are coming? No. If pitched to them at any point, they're sort of like, we, we're happy to follow you guys, but the gods and powers and all of this sort of magic is a little beyond not what we do. Yeah. That's that's not our, our forte, um, and we worry we'd be more of a hindrance than a help. They need someone back here to keep things running anyways. Yeah, that too. Tech nerds can't survive by themselves on an island. Yeah. But they say that when when you eventually are brought back to this part of the ocean, they'll be here. And if you need backup at any point, just kind of it's like a send us a dream or a message. We've got ships. We'll get there. Um, 
Alden shakes hands with Malachi and Finn and then kind of like goes for the forearm handshake with <laughs> Reagan and then just like pulls you in and gives you a hug. I hug him longer than is strictly necessary. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen him grip something so tightly. <laughs> Hannah, what does Alden smell like? You guys have a nice, a nice long hug. Um, he smells like um, sand <laughs> at this point, um, and also like wood. Um, and kind of like evergreens, <laughs> like that sort of smell. Wood. And there's like a little bit of a smell of like something like sweet or sharp, almost. I just like making Hannah describe the way things smell. <laughs> uh, Malachi, your moms, um, come over. They do. Shaw and Mar like give. Finn and Reagan hugs if they'll let them. Oh, for sure. They've never even spoken. <laughs> what? We had a whole tea time. That's true. You did yeah. speak with them the one time. And also like a road trip. When it was just yeah. the three of us on our ship. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. They like know Finn really well. <laughs> yeah. We spend like 10 minutes just saying inside jokes back and forth. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> um. And then they come over to you, Malachi, um, and Shala, like, holds out her arms for a hug. Mm. I let her hug me. <laughs> mm -hmm. You don't hug your mommy? She hugs you. You guys don't care about Malachi's feelings at all. <laughs> I think it would feel good to hug his mom. He's got problems with his mom. This is well known. Um... She gives you a hug and sort of, like, squeezes your shoulders again like she did when she gave you your axe back. I hug her back a little bit, but I'm still... In, I don't really, yeah. like, look at her, I don't think. Not super... I don't know. <laughs> it's a it's a tense hug. And she doesn't hold it for very long before she sort of, like, steps back and squeezes your shoulders like, Okay, you be safe out there. You too. And Mar, who has, like, not really talked to you very much and is sort of been keeping her distance from you um holds out her hand basically for like a a militaristic handshake basically like this almost feels like this is captain neiman mm -hmm. or sergeant neiman whatever her her rank was at the point when you knew her as she sort of like holds out her hand to you and she's like take care of yourself take care of your friends be safe i don't do a militaristic handshake with her i'm like you're not a part of that anymore you know are you? <sighs> I'm not, but old habits. Yeah, I, I... I think I'm just gonna give her, like, a normal... <laughs> Forearm handshake isn't normal, I guess, but... <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, though. Yeah, and sort of hold on a little bit longer than I would for just, like, something that's strictly, like, a fellow soldier, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're, if, if you're just here to escape the trouble that's sort of been brought upon you by what you found out, that's that's fine. But if you want to do things differently, this is your chance to do that. She looks over her shoulder, kind of at the like, group of people, kind of generally in the direction of, of where everybody else is, and looks back at you and goes... At this point, I'm here to help these kids not all get killed. And sort of, you know, one day at a time. That's something. If anyone can whip these scientists <laughs> into shape. <laughs> um, I mean, you taught me and look how well that turned out, so. Shala grins a little bit at that. And she, she goes... Yep, that's my wife. And sort of, like, squeezes Mars' arm. Fuck, dude, sure is. <laughs> and they pull away. Um, yeah, everyone else, I don't need to go through every single person, but Nell gives all you guys hugs. Um, Amelia gives you all very formulaic handshakes. I want to ask Nell specifically to look after the gardens. <laughs> yeah, um, they nod, and they're like, yeah, what do I need just like you know water them I, or? I think honestly I, I've not really done much growing things before but I'll figure something out it seems like they should be pretty hardy and you know hopefully they'll keep things running around here should things get tight yeah I'm adaptable I'll figure it out they give you a hug okay <laughs> I sort of <laughs> pat them on the back <laughs> as we hug yeah and you guys are able to get on that plaque 
I pull a white handkerchief out of nowhere <laughs> and wave it in the air as we pull away. <laughs> um, and you pull out of Solomon Cove and set a course for the Aberrant Sea. So, going through the Lightless Sea, gonna need some survival checks. <laughs> um, so go ahead and give me a survival check for your sort of first day of travel. Um, I'm going to say that you have advantage because of the help of everyone who's around you. I will also tell you that I am adjusting the DC to account for the fact that Reagan has this navigator's tattoo, um, which is very helpful in terms of like maintaining your bearings. Um, so please go ahead and roll. Uh, that's going to be a 23. Nice. Nice. Yeah, on a 23, um, you guys are navigating, uh, your, your path takes you kind of along a relatively straightforward route. It's just kind of a straight shot east before you're going to, basically a straight shot east until you've gotten below where you know the Emerald Eye is. And you know that as you get closer, even in the Lightless Sea, you should still be able to see it north of you and sort of navigate by that kind of slingshot around the south of it to get up into the Aberrant Sea. I do still need someone to roll me a d10. 10. Okay, cool. In that case, you guys are sailing along on that first day. I do, in fact, think Malachi is going to be a little extra withdrawn on this first day after okay. talking to his mothers. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing about Regan, but just because he's sulking. <laughs> Finn is like, ah, finally, the three of us get to hang out. Guys, <laughs> okay, Nurgle, you want to play tic tac toe? No, I'll I'll play cards with Finn or some. I'll play tic tac toe with I'll, Finn. I'll, I'll sit there. I'm just not gonna talk. <laughs> oh, all right, great. Ah! Nurgle's hanging out. All right, so ideal a game of cards for four. <laughs> <laughs> I play Malachi and I make Malachi lose. <laughs> Nurgle is phenomenal at cards. Oh my god. That's the first time you see Malachi express any outward emotion that day is when Reagan makes him lose. <laughs> His mouth sort of turns down a little bit. <laughs> I pass over the pot of copper pieces in the middle to Nurgle every time. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> um, as the, the couple of hours pass uh, uneventfully, um, everybody go ahead and give me a uh, perception check. 13. 18. 9. Okay. Reagan, you're the only one who spots out of the mist next to you. Um, not immediately next to you, maybe like 100, 150 feet away. Um, you see the prow of another ship emerging out of the mist. And with an 18, you also kind of clock that this ship is completely silent. Uh, How does this always happen to us? Heads up, boys. We got a ghost ship. <gasps> Ooh. Again. Maybe Bill is on board. Uh, <laughs> let's let's douse the lights right quick. Yup. Okay. Okay. You kill the lights. Nurgle, put out your cigar. <laughs> ah! He stubs it out. Real quick. <laughs> um, <laughs> go ahead and give me stealth checks. If you'd like, Nurgle can help a person with this. I don't suppose I can uh, merge with stone with fog <laughs> merge with deck <laughs> merge with decking <laughs> who's the worst at stealth malachi um i got a 13 nurgle's gonna give malachi advantage Thanks. by like so muffling the roll. noise of armor clanking with his feathers yeah, i just sit as still as a stone 18 yeah it's uh 11 actually nurgle gives malachi advantage by standing on his head like he's just a bird roosting on a rock in the middle of the sea <laughs> maybe my merge with stone can be like i become as still as a stone and that's how it works if if the text of the ability says you can use it wherever i'm happy to let you use it wherever and i think it does so then in that case it'll be a 21 okay um you guys see this ship sort of like pulls alongside you and you can see that as, as you're looking out at it, um, you see a single seagull, like, perched on the, the railing. Um, and kind of beyond the seagull, you can just barely, in the mist, kind of make out, like, three figures who look like they're, like, sitting in the middle of the deck, um, like they're playing cards. Oh, no. <laughs> wow, who are these fuckers? <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> uh, they don't seem to be paying you any mind. They're just sort of engaged in their card game. You you don't hear you don't hear them talking, but you can sort of like see the movement as if one of them is like laughing at something. What's he laughing about? I bet it wasn't even that funny. <laughs> is one of them laying on the ground in his armor? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> One of them is, is laying on the ground next to the other two. Hmm. This seems harmless. Hey, Finn. Do you still have your Finn doll? Yeah. Why? I don't know. <laughs> this seems thematically appropriate. Yeah. I pull out the little doll of myself and hold it up. You just hold it up? Yeah. Okay, nothing happens. Hmm. I put it back. They're not, like, mirroring you perfectly. They sort of mm. just seem to be, like, doing their own thing that's similar to what you were mm. just doing. And d- d- it does look like us, or can we not quite, like, make out? You can't quite tell because it's foggy and they're a little bit far away and you put out all the lights. Um, but, like, the the vague shapes certainly look like you. They're about your height, about your build, wearing similar to what you're wearing. I'd like to get my spyglass and take a closer look. Sure. Guys, what if we're the evil twins? <laughs> you pull out your spyglass. They do look like you guys, only like grayed out. It's almost like you're Ooh. looking like at yourselves in grayscale. Oh, I don't fucking like this. What happens if we just keep sailing? I was gonna just keep going. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> are they like, are they going like parallel to us or are they like coming at a collision course? They're going parallel Ooh. to you, just sort oh. of like... Probably like 50 feet away. That one guy wearing the nets looks pretty cool. You keep sailing. They keep sailing. Would you do anything after like five minutes? Should we try to talk to them? I would start racking my brain to see if I've ever heard of something like this. Uh, yeah, you can make a history check. Oh, I use detect magic. Uh Uh-huh. Not 20. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Reagan, you've heard of this before. This is uh, almost like a sea mirage, people will like refer to it as, or like a, it's a, it's, some sailors say it's an echo of yourselves, some say it's an echo of what you could be. You've heard that sometimes people will see reflections, but it'll be like one crew member is missing, mm. or like there's an extra person oh there, God. or like someone looks different really? than they did. Um you guys do notice that, like, on the other ship at this point, like, the seagull is, like, on the railing kind of, like, close to you guys and is the only one who seems to be, like, looking directly at your ship. Maybe Nurgle can talk to him. <laughs> Does the seagull that's looking at us have, like, an evil goatee? <laughs> 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 no, um, but he does have, like, very, like, beady eyes. Like a seagull. Even beadier than Nurgle's. He's wearing a red rubber glove on top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> Nurgle, can you communicate with, with him? Ah! Um, Nurgle kind of, like, fluffs out his feathers. Nurgle does not seem to like this. Mm. Um, the vibes are off, guys. The vibes are off. Mm-hmm. Mm. Nurgle, like, fluffs out his feathers and sort of, like, goes like, opposite the other seagull and, like, goes, ah! Um, the other seagull, like, opens its beak, but no sound comes out. Oh, I just got chills. (laughs) Regan kind of growls a bit, and I want to set us on an intercept course. Oh, like, to crash into him? Yeah. Mm. (laughs) Cool. Hey, what you you doing there, (laughs) Regan? Crossing the streams. Hmm. You never cross the streams, Regan. Um, you... Uh, steer the ship very gently, very just a little, yeah, a little of the angle. Oh, this is gonna scratch up the flames all over again. No, you steer the ship to crash into them. Um, can I have wisdom saving throws from all three of you? Hey, Reagan, where are we going? Straight. Dirty twenty. Twelve. Twenty-one. Okay. Reagan, you steer the ship toward this intercept course. Um, pretty quickly, Matt Black like turns, um, and they weren't that far from you. Um, so you see the other ship does not react at all um, as Matt Black goes and is about to like bring her uh, prow crashing directly into the other ship. Um, it is it is at this point, Reagan, that you notice um, that uh, the other figures, as you like get closer to them and can see them. A little more clearly, um, you see that the the other Finn and the other Malachi both have like 
pretty severe looking lightning burns on their Mm. arms and face. Um, And it's kind of, you notice that like in the moment before Matt Black crashes into the other ship and the other ship vanishes. At the moment when you would make contact, Mm. they just disappear. Oh, thank goodness. We were the real ones. Andy, is your detect magic, uh, can you have done that like when we got close enough right before we crashed? I, I said that I cast it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You still have it up. Um, so as you get closer, um, Finn, kind of like once it swings into within 30 feet, the whole thing is an illusion. You sort of pinged that right before, uh, but you don't get anything else other than illusion from it. Reagan, you do feel this sort of like chill settle over you as that happens. Um, please take uh, six psychic damage and gain a level of exhaustion. <laughs> oh, my God. Reagan cannot stop being exhausted. <laughs> the man is tired. I'm fucking tired, man. Why don't you take a nap for the day, Reagan? I could cast Dream, and then we could keep playing cards while you sleep. <laughs> and the best part is, you know how usually when we're playing a game, eventually you'll go, oh, man, I really I really hate to stop. And you're really laid on thick how much you hate to stop, but you say, I have to go take a nap. Oy. What the heck? This time that won't happen, because you'll already be sleeping. <laughs> Hannah, did they look like they were like... Can you can you tell me a little bit more about what I saw? Yes. Um it looked like at some point in the past and in the not too distant past, um Malachi and Finn had both been hit with lightning. Like they looked like they'd been struck by lightning. Mm. Um probably within the past couple weeks you'd estimate. Mm. Like they were they were not like actively injured or something like but that. They were still alive. They didn't look like corpses. Yeah, they didn't look dead. Um, but they looked as if they had been badly hurt. Hmm. And me and Finn don't see anything, right? No, you and Finn didn't see this. Oh, they're gone. This is great. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was nothing. I'm just gonna stay over here by the wheel. Okay. We could play catch. Reagan, you look... Nurgle's feathers are still all fluffed up. Ooh. Your dark circles went from 1 to 100, like, real quick. Are you okay? No, I I don't... I hate mirages. Wow. <laughs> Me when I'm in the desert. Fact. Um, I'm brushing Nurgle. Maybe, maybe you tell me where to go and I take the wheel for a while. You look like you could use a nap. I... We've got some time. Let me just... Let me just be up here for a while. Do what you need to, but just make sure that you get some extra sleep tonight. You look rough, buddy. (laughs) And also, the ship is self-steering. I need this right now, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Hi, hi, Captain! Um, Reagan steers the ship for a little while, but there's no sign of anything else. No more ghost ship. Um, and you, your tattoo lets you know that you guys have managed to stay more or less on course. You've kind of drifted weirdly a couple times, but you're, you're pretty on course. Um, you're able to take a long rest, uneventfully. Reagan, the level of exhaustion clears. Um, your psychic damage clears. I need another survival check, and then another d10. Probably another d10 for the next day. All right. 25. Wow. Nice. Um, yeah. Finn, your connection with the ocean is helpful in terms of avoiding the disorienting effects of the fog. Ah, You just sort of focus on the water um, and are able to steer yourself a little bit better. Um, I do need someone to roll me a d10, please. Nine. And then I also need to know if there is anything else that anything you guys want to do initiated by yourselves on this Mm. second day. We really haven't talked in a while, have we, guys? I mean, presumably we talked yesterday while we were hanging out. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> ah, my mistake. Uh, we haven't talked much since, uh, prison. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? Sure does. Christ, you guys. What the hell are we doing? <gasps> oh, well, remember how the adventurer, like, did her god ascension thing? Now we're sailing I mean, in the macro to... sense. In the macro sense. Oh. In the macro, I think we're just, I don't know. Our this best. This has been a, 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 uh, an awful few weeks, frankly. We're adventuring. <laughs> I guess. I mean, the stakes are way higher, but it's the same thing we've always been doing. Uh. And I see no reason to think it won't work out like it has. I'll be honest, Finn, it hasn't worked out great yet. <laughs> huh. Uh. Hmm. Look, I... You got a point. I just... I have to kill Redville. Oh, 
Okay. Good. Uh, thumbs up to that. You seemed unsure of that last time. I'm glad you've... Well, yeah, but I had a, I had a good little chat with Alden. Uh, do you know he smells? He smells like evergreens. It's kind of nice. Uh, and yeah. uh, wow, that's like home. Come on, man. We all know what Alden smells like. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know what it is. It's like it's easier. It's easier to take care of something for someone else than it is for yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I fully support you killing Revval. I'll I'll do my best to make that happen. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Everybody, hands in. Kill Redfall. Kill Redfall. <laughs> uh, what about you, Finn? Do you have any goals? Uh, I would say my main goal is to just deal with this whole situation. So, wow, well, that's a big one. Oh yeah. God! Everyone in Gillsbury can oh, fuck, sort of Finn. have a normal life Jesus again. Jesus Christ! Um, I would also like to figure out what's obstructing me and my dad's line of communication that's bothering me you've been having trouble yeah like i can still use my magic fine so obviously there's we're still connected but you know he didn't answer my letter and i (sighs) i've just felt him a little less lately yeah yeah no that's hard yeah i want to go back to when everything was fun have you tried writing him since no i guess i haven't it's been hectic maybe once we get closer to the eye Hmm. i don't know where your dad lives but <laughs> sort of all around. Seems like that would be a, a good place f- to contact him, perhaps. Anywhere there's ocean, his presence is felt. Finn, I feel like we're not going to be having fun for a, a hot while here. I know, but we someday. If we get back to Gillsbury, though, I think I can I can help out with the, the problems they're having. Oh? I, I, I learned how to do something new, and... It'll at least help sustain them until they can get, <laughs> until they can get the economy back on its feet. <laughs> oh, okay. I can, I can help. Yeah. I can help with them. Um, they won't. I, honestly, maybe you'll like this. They won't have to fish as much. Oh my god! <laughs> I kiss Malachi on the cheek. <laughs> wow. Okay. Are you serious? That's incredible. That's all I've ever wanted. I mean, I, okay. I, we're not there yet. I mean, I, I we're not at Gillsbury, so this is just like a maybe thing that I can try and help with. Yeah. No promises, but okay. But no, oh my god, that'd be incredible. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Although I I have to say I've only tried it once and it was on pretty shitty ground. So what? Oh, was it like the plant thing you did on the island? Yeah, yeah. I can I can like make oh. uh better crops. Oh my god! Yeah, maybe everyone can get into agriculture. Or normal plants, I guess. If anybody wants, like, a friend on the on the ship here while we're traveling, anyone wants a little succulent or something, I can probably make that hey, happen. I've got all the friends I need right here. Yeah, you guys are pretty <coughs> much the only ones. So. I look over the railing. <laughs> oh, did you mean us? I thought you were. I thought you were talking about fish. Yeah, you guys and the few dozen fish who have accumulated who are falling okay. in our wake. I look down over the railing and I can see all of these little fish swimming after us. <laughs> There's a school of fish. I wave down to them. Wow, it's a good thing we don't have any motors. <laughs> any what? What? Oh, nothing. It's like a can. <laughs> I- I've never heard that word before. Oh, I learned it in insurance school. Ah. I pull Finn into like a, a a one-armed hug that's like a little bit of a headlock, but also a hug. I give him a two-armed hug back. Yeah. Mm. Malachi one. stands there. <laughs> and he pats both of them on the head. Oh, Reagan, Reagan, your scales are scratching my cheek a little. No, that's exfoliation. <laughs> oh, okay. Sea creatures do it all the time. Uh, Malachi, as you pat their heads, um, you catch right out of the corner of your eye, a light out over the ocean. Malachi whips around. You whip your head toward it, it's still there. Um. Just blinking faintly. Uh, do you, do you see that? Do we? You don't see it until Malachi points it out. But once he points to it, you can see it. Just this, oh. this little, like, white light blinking slightly. Hmm. Lighthouse? Does it look just like the light from my dream? It does look just like the light from your dream. Um, hey, how are we doing on time? Uh, I mean, we're not really on a specific timetable, just sort of making haste. That's true. And it's it's only the second day, but so far you've stayed on course. You have not yet gotten lost in a way that you need to make up for. Because I've been dreaming about that pretty consistently. Oh. 
Can I pull out my holy symbol mm -hmm. and see if it looks just normal? It looks just normal, but there is a sort of like a like a thrill that like like a little hit of adrenaline as you pull it out. I I feel like I. I, I walk over to one of the rowboats and I start untying the rowboat. Uh oh, uh oh. Cool. Whoa. Did the sirens get him? No, hey, Mal, we can. <laughs> yeah, I'll. 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 I, I turn the boat in that direction. The ship. I don't know if, I, if, I, if, if, if we can get to it on the ship. I've always been in a rowboat in the dream. It's one of those things you need to. He needs to do alone. I don't know. Wait, what? Well, let's, let's close a little bit. The rowboat can fit three. Let's close a little <laughs> bit of distance. <laughs> And then, if we're not making any progress, because... Yeah, okay. Yeah? All right. Um, I am, like, glued to the railing next to the rowboat there. Oh, God, sorry. I spilled glue on the railing earlier. That's my bad. <laughs> ben, you sick son of a bitch. You have to learn to control your liquids. I was trying to make a craft. You guys turn Matt Black toward the light and begin moving toward it. Um, at first, it sort of seems like nothing is happening. But after, after like, 10, 20 minutes or so, you realize that the light is indeed, like, growing a little bit brighter and a little bit steadier um, as you're moving toward it. Um, you can tell that this is, you are moving toward something. Um, Malachi, you're standing there with your hands gripped to the railing and your eyes trained on this light. Um, Reagan, you're at the wheel. Finn, you're standing there, Nurgle beside you, kind of feeling the ocean and helping you guys navigate. And then you blink. No. And you're standing on land. Me? Or all of us? Each of you experience this. A second ago, you were standing on Matt Black, looking at this light, moving toward it, and now all of a sudden, you are standing on land and you're Yuck. by yourself. Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> Reagan, you appear to be in some sort of forest clearing as you like look around, you're you're standing, there's all these trees around you. Um, but the trees look weird. They're they're not like any trees you've ever seen. The leaves are like different shapes. Um, they're also colorful. There's this sudden like difference between the uh dimness of the lightless sea and the bright colors that you're spotting around you. Um oh no. Finn, uh you're standing in like some sort of like rocky valley. Um you can see there's like these tall like rock walls kind of around you like you're you're standing in the bottom of a canyon or something like that. Um It's like a dry ocean. All these different gray kind of like marbled um rocks. Um and this like weird lizard is like on a rock a little bit away from you kind of like looks at you and like licks its eyes and then runs away. I love um, it when they do that. <laughs> Like a normal sized lizard? Yeah, like a normal a normal sized lizard, but it is um like a bright turquoise color. Hmm. Licks its eyes and I stick out my tongue and try to lick my eye. <laughs> you can't do it, unfortunately. <laughs> trying to follow the local customs. You know who can do it? Me. I can do it. Malachi, you're standing on some sort of open plain. Um in fact it, it looks as you as you look down at the surface beneath your feet, it's like a salt flat. Um like the salt is kind of like crunching beneath your boots um as you look around you and and it seems to stretch an expanse in all directions underneath this bright blue sky and it is just you alone in the middle of this plain. Um and that I think is where we will end our <laughs> session. You sick son of a bitch, McLean. Hannah! Mm. I have never been so erect. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wild. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you so much for listening, and thank you so much for being with us for 50 whole episodes. Um... We are, like we mentioned last week, doing a special Q&A episode, um, so please go ahead and submit your questions. We'll be taking those for one more week, um, so get those in by June 27th, which is next Monday, if you could please. Um, questions about the podcast, about our characters, about 
D&D &D in general. If you want to throw in one or two about just us as people or our lives, hey, that's fine too. It's kind of an anything goes. Um, you can submit those questions to us on any of our social medias. Um, there's a post up on patreon.com slash ship of fools. You can DM us on Instagram or tweet at us or go to our Tumblr ask box. Um, all of those are at ship of fools cast. Um, or you could just sort of drop a message in a bottle and put it in the ocean. Although those, the currents are a little unreliable. I don't know if that one could get there by the 27th, but I mean, you're willing, you know, you can, you can give it a shot if you're willing to risk it. Um, and then we will be back with our next normal campaign episode on July 5th. Um, as always, we have some people we need to thank. Thank you so much to Lucas Mangold for our beautiful theme music. You can contact him at lucascarlmusic at gmail.com for all of your music needs. And thank you to Theo Golden for our logo art. You can find him at tgoldenart on Instagram. And yeah, like I said, next main campaign episode is July 5th. Get your questions for the Q&A in by June 27th. And until then, we will see you on the open seas. Goodbye! <laughs>